Hey everyone, this is Tony Teaches Tech. I'm Tony, and in this video, we're going to talk about CPUs for VPSs, or in other words, central processing units for virtual private servers. And specifically, I want to answer two questions. The first is related to the fact that DigitalOcean released a new line of premium droplets in early 2021. This Intel one here, which operates between 2.5 and 3.9 gigahertz, and this AMD one right here, which operates between 2 and 3.35 gigahertz. Now I want to find out how to take advantage of this turbo max frequency and not only that but determine if it's possible to overclock these CPUs. If you're not familiar, overclocking is the practice of increasing the clock rate of a computer to exceed that certified by the manufacturer. In other words, can we make the VPS faster? So the first thing I did was I spun up a fresh Intel premium droplet on DigitalOcean and proceeded to look at the CPU info, which as expected tells us that the CPU operates at a frequency of right around 2,500 megahertz, which is equal to 2.5 gigahertz. What we don't see though is any reference to the turbo frequency of 3.9 gigahertz anywhere. I'll admit, I'm kind of learning as I'm going here, so I figured I'd reach out to DigitalOcean support and ask them if the max turbo frequency of 3.9 GHz is possible to achieve on the droplet, and if so, how can I enable it and measure it. The support team got back to me and said to run the CPU info command, which I had already done, and also suggested to run TurboStat, which seemed promising as this would report the processor frequency and idle statistics in real time. Unfortunately, TurboStat gave me this error, which I reported back to DigitalOcean support, and their response back to me basically states that this command will not work in a KVM. Well, what is a KVM? A KVM lets you turn Linux into a hypervisor that allows a host machine to run multiple isolated environments called guests or virtual machines, which is essentially what a VPS is, you know, multiple private servers on a larger host machine. So that ended up being a dead end. And what I did next was I moved on and dove into the DigitalOcean documentation and found this community post on enabling CPU Turbo Boost on DigitalOcean droplets. This user here had the exact same question as me. Are we able to enable Turbo Boost for our droplets to get every bit of possible performance? The one and only answer explains that Turbo Boost is an automatic process that the operating system manages only when needed. The answer goes on to explain that this is not something accessible from within a droplet, and when running commands like CPU info, for example, the droplet will report the base chip frequency and not the turbo frequency. So at this point, I'm pretty much convinced that there is no way to control the CPU frequency, even if you have root access, due to the fact that each droplet is its own virtual private server on a larger host machine, and because DigitalOcean uses kernel-based virtual machines, there's no way for us to access the CPU hardware. Now, I also promised that we talk about overclocking, which based on my research is typically done in the BIOS, which we definitely don't have access to on a VPS. In case you're not familiar, a BIOS refers to the firmware that initializes the hardware during the boot process. But you know, just for the heck of it, I wanted to see if the CPU itself was overclockable because not every CPU can be overclocked. The official Intel website states that only Intel CPUs with model numbers that end with a K or an X are overclockable. So with this in mind, I followed the link on DigitalOcean's press release regarding their new premium droplets to this Wikipedia page about the Cascade Lake processor family. None of the CPU model numbers on this page have a K or an X at the end, except for these few up here at the top, which are apparently built for desktops and not servers. So due to the fact that on a VPS, we don't have access to the BIOS, we are running on top of an architecture that doesn't give the user control over the CPU, and because the CPU itself is probably not overclockable, we are pretty much stuck with the base frequency and at the mercy of the operating system to give us that extra turbo boost. Hope you guys found this video helpful. If you did, let me know by giving it a like. And you know, if I missed something, then definitely let me know in the comments below. Subscribe to this channel for more videos like this from me in the future. And if you do, I will see you in the next one.